Hey there, this is Natalie, and this is part seven of my reading of the Mashoku Tensei prequel, Old Dragon's Tale. This will cover chapters 13 and 14. This one does leave us on a bit of a bombshell, but I'll have part eight up very soon, so look out for that. As always, please consider subscribing if you like this kind of content. My stats show me that 30% of people watching these readings aren't subscribed yet, and obviously you don't have to, but it's free and it really helps me out. And if you've come as far as part seven, you know you want more. With that out of the way, let's get straight back into Old Dragon's Tale. Chapter 13, The Dragon Diplomat. Before getting into the main subject, let's talk about the roles of the five dragon generals. As I mentioned before, each of the five dragon generals is entrusted with work by the dragon god. Dora Summer trains dragons, Maxwell exterminates demonic beasts, Chaos manufactures weaponry, Sillard is in charge of the dragon warriors. In reality, apart from those public jobs, there's also behind the scenes work, but let's leave that for now. When I was appointed as dragon general, I was also assigned a certain job, as dragon god Summer's assistant, or more properly, as his escort but basically act as his personal attendant. Aside from surveying Dragon God Summer's surroundings, escort duty, offering suggestions, carrying his water, taking care of miscellaneous chores like that. Even though they might be chores, for a newcomer like me, to always be by the side of Dragon God Summer, it was an enormous honor. Perhaps enough to displease the other Dragon Generals, because everyone, particularly the five Dragon Generals, respected, awed, and worshipped the dragon god. So maybe such an honour for a rookie like me could be a cause of envy. Of course, even if they have complaints, they did not voice them. From my point of view, being an attendant was just the right role for me. There was no reason to oppose it. Thus, I travelled by dragon god's side to the other worlds. Research on teleportation magic was not yet complete at that point, but there was another way. In every world, there was always a particular altar somewhere. When Dragon God entered it, I followed. The altar activated and took us to an empty space of pure white. You can travel to the altars of different worlds by flying there. The first world I was brought, a magical world swirling with poison and miasma. Yes, the demon world. This is... As I stepped out of the altar and saw the sight spreading out before me, I froze. Demon world, a place of only bitter memories for me. Naturally, those negative feelings began to flood back as I reminisced. What's wrong? No, nothing. Of course, coming back now fully grown, my perspective changed. Having plenty of experience, the demon town I once so longed for no longer interested me, nor any sense of anger. I felt almost nostalgic of the demon beasts roaming in the distance. It must have been that I felt no regret. Let's go. Yes, sir. Dragon God took off without explaining where to go. Where am I? No need for such stupid questions. Dragon God Summer leads, I follow. Dragon God was heading towards the heart of the demon world, a giant crater that looks like a mountain range from a distance. There were countless houses lined up inside, and a huge black iron castle in the centre of the crater. The centre of the demon world, the demon capital Dilek, and the demon god castle Gylek. As we approached the castle, I observed bonfires lit in a circular arrangement near the roof of the castle. Dragon god landed on the centre of the circle without hesitation. Innumerable demons stood around the circle, demons of various races those with multiple arms, those with beast-like legs, those with phosphorescence, those with no eyes. They didn't seem to be very happy to see Dragon God and me. They didn't display an attitude, but I could sense the tension in the air immediately. Ga ha 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 ha! Welcome, Dragon God Sama! Meanwhile, from throngs of demons, one stepped forward. Among the tense crowd, he alone was unusual. He approached us with a friendly attitude, laughing loudly. Hmm, but he stopped when he saw me. His smile withdrew, replaced by a solemn expression. 
I also lost my voice when I saw him. I knew him. Black skin, six arms, purple hair, his upper body completely naked. Seeing him, I instantly began to quiver. Once upon a time, yes, a long time ago, when I was still living in the demon world, the person who kicked me out every time I tried to enter the city. Yes, it's indeed him. The demon king who defeated me many times in the demon world. This is my escort, one of the five dragon generals, Demon Dragon King Laplace. Dragon God stepped in after seeing us both frozen in place. With those words, I was reminded of my position and the reason for my visit. I immediately gave the utmost salute and greeted the Demon Lord. I'm the Demon Dragon King Laplace. I'm pleased to make your acquaintance. Hmm. In response, the Demon King made a small, thoughtful gesture. Ha 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 I'm one of the eight Demon Kings. Necros Lacrosse. Remember it. He laughed vigorously. Reason for visiting this world? Attending the meeting. The gods of each world hold regular meetings together. I guess I mentioned that before. That, of course, continued on. The venue would change from time to time, but it rarely rotated to the Dragon World, Heaven World, or Sea World. Other gods also bring attendants with them, and some of them couldn't fly or swim, probably being considerate of that. That aside, a meeting of the gods. The meeting agenda was the various troubles that recently had appeared among the worlds. The sudden appearance of demonic beasts, yes, the topic of sudden teleportation. Each world was eager to solve these problems, but no solution had yet been offered. On the contrary, listening to the meeting while standing in attendance behind the dragon god, I could tell that the relationship between the gods had soured. It's the monsters again. They destroy one of my towns. One of my chiefs disappeared in a transfer and thousands died when a war broke out. Hmm. <laughs> Rumor has it that you already completed teleportation research sure it isn't a cover-up. What? How can you believe such baseless rumours? Or should I believe that you released those monsters? Seagod, a man with a large amount of tentacles growing from his mouth and squid-like slimy skin. Beast God, a man with two heads, a dog and a cat, riding on a white wolf. Heaven God, a beautiful man with twin eyes on his forehead and six wings on his back. Demon God, a man with eight arms and six horns, spanning a height of over three meters. In particular, the relationship between the four was terrible. Each time they met, they cursed bitterly at each other, as if they're ready to tear at each other at any moment. God's majesty, anger, and overwhelming power, it was terrifying to behold. Well, everyone calm down. Fighting here won't help solve anything. It's fine. The research is going well, so I'm sure we'll find the cause soon. Don't be fooled by these baseless rumors. That's right. There's no point fighting among ourselves. If we fight, it will only cost more lives of our people. Meanwhile, only two were trying to stop the fight. Our great dragon god and the mosaic looking human god that's hard to recall. Without them, the worlds would have long cut ties with each other or maybe even been to war already. When the gods heard the word of human god, everyone went silent. Human god commanded great respect. As founder of this conference, and due to the rapid development of the human race, he was often consulted by the other gods. In other words, he gave more than he received, overwhelmingly, to the other gods. Therefore, it was easy to see that everyone respected human god. Dragon god Summer too was no exception. Hmm, as if you're so prim and proper, Dragon God. However, Demon God did not shut up, and the words that followed were enough to make me tremble. I've heard that you kidnapped my son, Necrolia Nacrolia, tortured and killed him. The words shook me inside. This sudden statement could start a war between the Demon and Dragon World, because I knew this rumor to be true. Although there's a case on the Dragon God's side, but if we answered honestly, a fight would break out. It's just a rumor. I don't know anyone like that. Dragon God Summer lied. It surprised me a little because I thought he was a person who would never lie. No, it's only expected. 
To be honest, we were already told to never expose the fact that Necrolia Necrolia killed Crystal Summer. Exposing it would only lead to quarrel and war. Perhaps Demon God was merely testing us, but we can't take the bait. Dragon God Summer chose a different path. Rather than that, look, Demon God, at this man. Dragon God Summer gazed toward me, standing behind him. I immediately gave the utmost salute. Don't shame the Dragon God. That half demon, half dragon mixed child, I thought you agreed to take him away. What about him? He's now an important figure in the dragon world, a living proof that the dragon race felt no hostility toward the demons. Hmm. The demon looked at me and snorted, staring, glowering at me. In fact, his eyes were shining. That must have been a kind of demon eye. After seeing a result of his demon eye, Demon God sank back deep in the chair. I see. I'll believe you. Originally, I was originally adopted for this purpose, but that was the first time it actually worked. For the time being, it would not be an exaggeration to say we avoided a direct confrontation between the demon world and the dragon world. I don't want to fight either. At least Demon God didn't seem to want to deal with the dragon world either. No, it's not just the demon god. None of the gods want a large-scale conflict to break out. Frustrated by the strange circumstances, they've grown suspicious of each other. The meeting was always tense like that. Perhaps it used to be more peaceful, but at that time, everyone was frustrated and aggressive. It's a meeting for exchanging information, but few personal stories were exchanged. Perhaps he didn't want to give useful information to a suspect of the case. It was an uncomfortable situation. In a way, it can be said that my mission was to improve such an uncomfortable situation. It was diplomacy that I was entrusted with. Of course, it wasn't to befriend the other gods. Rather, it's their underlings that I should get along with. In other words, other attendants like me. Even though they're attendants here, back home they're all important figures of their worlds. If we build a relationship of trust between us, maybe we can avoid the worst in case of emergency. That was my plan. The first person I reached out to is a demon, whose world we're in a tense relationship with lately. The people of Dragonworld were becoming more hostile to the demons. From the sounds of it in the meeting, it's likewise in the demon world as well. That's why I thought to offer an olive branch to the demon world to find a way to peace. Necros Lacros. After the meeting was over, I called out to a prominent giant of a man. I am the immortal demon king Necros Lacros of the eight great demon kings. Necros Lacros looked back and was about to laugh loudly, but he turned solemn when he saw me. You're... He glared at me, his face distorting with trouble, perhaps thinking I came for revenge. That's why I answered. I would like to introduce myself again. I am the demon Dragon King Laplace of the Five Dragon Kings, not a humanoid demon beast without a name. It is Laplace. Hmm. With that said, Necros Lacros displayed an expression fitting of a demon king. As I learned later, he decided then to never bring up what passed in the past. I did not begrudge him either. It would be pointless. Many things had changed between then and now. Recently, bad rumours about the demon world are widespread in the dragon world. I hope we can resolve this. Well, I have no objection to that, but I hear that the dragons hate the demons, right? The fact that I, a half-demon and half-dragon, was selected as a five-dragon general is proof that rumours are nothing more than rumours. Dragon God Summer wishes for peace. If the demon god Sama doesn't want to fight either, I ask for your cooperation. When I said that, Necros Lacros folded his six arms and looked down at me, testing me with an unpleasant gaze, but I decided to endure, perhaps determining whether I'm being truthful. Depending on how you think about it, maybe I was chosen to lower the guard against the dragon race. Mm. After a while, Necros Lacros nodded heavily. Demon God Summer does not wish for war. Mysterious things have happened so much these days that things are a bit tense. Well, it's okay. Let's cooperate. 
Thus, I and Necros Lacros joined hands. I worked with Necros Lacros and recruited collaborators around the world. Because I only travelled to different worlds while attending the meetings of the gods, it took a long time, but eventually I visited every world. Sea World, a world without land, populated by people with scales, gills and fins. I was in awe. After all, I've never seen an ocean before. There was little water in Demon World, let alone a sea. Dragon World does have waterfalls and lakes, but nothing could be called an ocean either. Yet before me, who never knew of such a thing, an endless ocean spanned outward. A world of nothing above to reflect off the ocean left me with some terrible memories. While there's nothing above the ocean, under the sea it was truly lively. Beast World, where dense forests and mountains continue endlessly, I was surprised by that place as well. There's certainly mountains and forests on Dragon World, but nothing so vivid and green and full of life so incredibly dense. Every step you would take would send some little insects or lizards scattering. Every other world seemed so barren compared to its richness in lives. Oh, but you came from the Great Forest, so that might not strike you as odd. Then there was the Heaven World, with its rocky masses hanging in the air where only flying creatures could live. Quite similar to Dragon World, only that in Dragon World the surface was above, while in Heaven World, the surface was below. Salt covers the land there. With a thin, ankle-height layer of water above the salt layer. It was salty when I licked it, so maybe it was an ocean as well. The water was fully saturated with salt, so nothing could live in it. All creatures live in the sky and are covered with feathers. Looking back, I think Heaven World was the most beautiful of all of them. But back then, I was creeped out since everything I knew was covered in scales. Finally, Human World was an endless grassland, rolling hills covered in grass spreading endlessly, groves of trees not big enough to be called forests, hills not tall enough to be called mountains, a widespread environment perfect for humans to thrive. The people there were so incredibly frail. At the time, I wondered how such poor creatures could really live, they're weaker than when I was first found by Dragon God Summer. Compared to other races in the world, they were like babies. However, the world was clearly more civilized than others. Tall buildings, wide roads, well-armed troops. Even though they're weak, with no natural predators, they dominated their world. Afterwards, I slowly increased my number of collaborators. It took a lot of effort, but things worked out when they learned that Necros Lacros was working with me. Everyone thought that Dragon World and Demon World would fight to the end. After all, Dragon World and Demon World had overwhelming combat power compared to other worlds. If representatives of those two worlds both loudly declare their intent for peace, despite being a little skeptical, no one refused. During the God Conferences, I would invite their attendants and hold our own meetings about our future plans. How do we achieve a lasting peace? Inviting a variety of opinions to create constructive plans, but not everything went well. Why? This is because the faces of the attendants would change from time to time, especially for the beasts and humans. They can only live for a moment compared to the dragons and demons a short lifespan. The heaven race lived comparably longer, but they also change eventually. Lifespan of the sea race varies greatly depending on the individual, so their numbers change irregularly. When people change, so do their thinking. Some exposed hostility towards other races, but I didn't give up. Working hard with Necros Lacros to bring them together. The gods have no intention of fighting. We should follow along and seek a path of peace. We must take the initiative and set an example for us who are closest to the gods. Some changed their minds and others did not. Once everyone is united, we can achieve progress. Of course, it's not just meetings. We actually did a lot of things to advance the peace. I also tried various things that didn't work. Cultural exchange was particularly effective. Take residents of two worlds and ask them to work at each other's world for a while. If you play an active role there, it will help improve the image of other worlds. 
yes, just as I did for Dragon and Demon World. Of course, environmental limitations make places like SeaWorld difficult for others to visit, but with the help of God, it was not impossible. Dragon World invited specialists from other worlds. While Dragon World was strong, we'd fallen a step or two behind other worlds in technological progress. Food preservation, paper making, agriculture. It was faster and more effective to bring in a technician than to transmit it verbally. No, it certainly wasn't the fault of Dragon God Summer. Dragon God Summer was always bringing new technologies back from other worlds. However, technology advances day by day. By the time we, the Dragon Race, adopted a new technology, it was often already outdated. Our slow technological development may be related to the long lifespan of Dragon Race. However, if we welcome engineers from other worlds, that could be solved. In return, Dragon World sends Dragon Warriors to other worlds. The Dragon Race is strong. From the perspective of people in other worlds, it's no exaggeration to say that we're as powerful as gods. They go to other worlds to subdue monsters. I learned around this time that the power of monsters varies from world to world. Strong worlds spread strong monsters. Demon and dragon worlds are the strongest compared to all the worlds. Having fought the strongest monsters, our dragon warriors are very active in other worlds. But at the same time, they're feared. But I'll put that aside for now. Various specialists came to dragon world. Among them, a woman from demon world stood out the most. Demon Emperor Kyrissus Kallisis, Demon God's wife. She was more concerned than anyone over the deteriorating relationship between Dragon and Demon World, and visited Dragon World on her own accord. A brilliant magician. It's magic, not magic techniques. It's difficult to explain the difference between magic and magic techniques. Ability to freely manipulate magical energy to create supernatural phenomena, Magic can do even more advanced things without chanting or magic circles. In fact, she was the one that invented the magic circle. It is no exaggeration to say that she was the source of all the magic known today. She did her best to serve Dragon World. Dragon World's rudimentary research into Ki made enormous progress under her guidance. In Dragon World, the demons were said to be barbaric and stupid. However, many people changed their perceptions after meeting her. Intelligent, competent, and calm. She reminded people of Lunaria Sama. Their personalities were quite similar. Before I realized it, she was getting along particularly well with Lunaria Sama. They must have found a kinship as fellow wives of gods. Kyrissus, Kallisus, and I. Thanks to the efforts of two of us from Demon World, the hostility towards Demon World gradually diminished within Dragon World. Even Chaos, always so hostile to demons, restrained himself. My hard work paid off. It was going well. Meetings with other races have gradually become more peaceful cultural exchanges. Sudden teleportation and monster appearances still occurred, but we no longer suspect each other over it. Dragon God Sama also praised my work. Well, one good thing followed another, and even happier news came. Lunaria gave birth. The son of Dragon God. Chapter 14. Birthday Festival, and also... Truth is, there was no custom of holding festivals in Dragon World back then. Perhaps having a long lifespan, we didn't feel the urge to hold grand celebrations. However, it was a special time. The entire Dragon World was in a festive mood. It was only expected. The child of Dragon Sama, who everyone worships, and Lunaria Sama, who everyone adores, was finally born. Sillard announced that a parade would be held at Dragon's Royal Mountain. Maxwell travelled all over Dragon World to collect dragon meat. Even the dragons undergoing training with Dora Sama were treated well every day. Chaos made fireworks, an invention of the human world, to excite the parade. People from all over Dragon World have gathered, hoping for a glimpse of the son of Dragon God. It didn't last just a day or two. It would last for 10 to 20 years. The long living Dragon Race also celebrate for a long time. It's not a day or two. The festival lasted for decades. The life of the dragons is long, so the joy lasts long. 
It might have lasted for nearly a century. Everyone was jubilant. I'd never seen Dragon World so overjoyed. Dragon God Summer and I were a little late to the festival because we're at the meeting of the gods. Even though when Dragon God Summer returned, the throngs welcomed us with a joyous chorus. Surprised, I didn't really understand what was going on, but Dragon God seemed to catch on immediately. With one great flap of his wings, he darted towards his home. Of course, I followed. When we arrived, the family came out to welcome us. Welcome back, husband, Laplace, Lunaria Summer and the servants, and held by Lunaria Summer like a precious jewel, Dragon God's son. Husband, the child has been born. Indeed, Dragon God Summer looked unexpectedly hesitant towards his own child. The expression on his face was neither laughter or tears, yet the feeling of happiness was still conveyed. Would you hold the child? Yes. Dragon God received his child from Lunaria Summer. It wasn't awkward, but his hands did tremble a little. How strange. Although everyone of Dragon World I considered my own, but it feels a little special to be holding this child. Husband, please give the child a name. Dragon God Summer looked seriously toward Lunaria Summer when he heard her. May I? Yes. I felt nostalgic seeing that. Yes, when I was adopted, such an exchange took place as well. That's right. Hmm. However, Dragon God Summer stopped himself. It's unusual for Dragon God to be lost for words and not give an answer immediately. What is it? I can't think of one. That's no good. Didn't we agree that husband would grant the child a name? I know, but I can't do it now. Give me some time. Yes. The name of the child was not determined immediately after birth. Dragon God Summer was not typically hesitant. He was always a decisive person, but there's a chasm between naming someone like me and someone who's part of yourself. After that, Dragon God Summer worried for a long time. He even asked me for an opinion. Of course, I couldn't give a good answer. It was preposterous for someone like me to have an opinion. It can't be helped. After all, that was the son of Dragon God. If by chance he named using my suggestion, such a fearsome thought would make my hair turn white. Leaving the naming issue aside, after holding the baby for a while, Dragon God Summer returned him to Lunaria Summer. After receiving her child, Lunaria Summer looked toward me, who was watching over from a corner of the room. Laplace, come. Why don't you hold the child? Looking at the worried Dragon God, Lunaria abruptly said, I was shocked. What a fearsome thought. Me? Are you sure? Of course. It's your younger brother, after all. I was adopted, so it's technically true. Even so, I never presumed to carry myself as a son of Dragon God, because I wasn't really Dragon God's son. I no longer considered myself the family pet, but I knew my station. If I forget the grace that gave me so much happiness and start behaving outrageously, I'd kill myself. However, Lunaria Summer asked me to hold him. She said he was my younger brother. It would be stubborn and inflexible of me to refuse. Yes. I held the child in my arms. He's warmer than the average dragon race. No, that's just how babies are. I held him gingerly, worried that the child might feel uncomfortable. The baby had the looks of Dragon God Summer. He had Dragon God Summer's silver hair, fearless face, even similar scale colorings, although he had less scales than normal, probably due to the human blood mixed in. There were almost no scales on his face or other conspicuous places. Now that I thought about him, I also have fewer scales, probably because of my mixed blood. No, I shouldn't be so disrespectful towards son of Dragon God Summer. When I held that child, I naturally felt a sense of awe. This person will surely carry Dragon World's future on his back. My role must be to help him and protect him. I sensed my duty in that moment. After that, the five Dragon Generals came one after another, Sillard, Maxwell, Chaos and Dora Sama. Everyone was impressed by the child and they left with a solemn expression. Perhaps they felt the same as I did. 
It's not just the dragon generals, the gods of other worlds came too. Typically, gods do not appear in other worlds, but this was a special occasion. Human god, demon god, heaven god, sea god and beast god all came to give their blessings. It was a spectacular moment. Indeed, because the gods of the other world who rarely appeared all came to bless the birth of a child. It was absolutely majestic. Again, everyone in the dragon world was awed by the auspiciousness of his birth. When the festival was nearly over, as the festive atmosphere began to settle, she came. A demon race woman with black purple skin and white hair. Demon Emperor Kyrasis Kallisis. Lunaria, congratulations. Kyrasis, I was wondering when you would come. As I said before, Kyrasis was on good terms with Lunaria Sama. When Lunaria Sama recognized her, a smile bloomed from her face. I didn't realize they were so intimate. At that time, I was often away from home. However, they must be close to be this happy to see each other. I rushed over as soon as I heard you were giving birth. Then you're a bit late. Research was going well these days. I was going to come earlier, but things were going so smoothly that I wanted to see how far I could take it. How'd it go? These researchers at Dragonworld are great at investigating the details. They're rough at first, but quick on the uptake. They're quite refreshing to work with. Don't Demon World have excellent researchers as well? Haha, <laughs> you sure are great at telling jokes. Demons are a bunch of rough idiots. There's no refining those ruffians into a true researcher. Kyrasis was a woman with boisterous laughter. No, not just Kyrasis, other demons as well. Pretty much all the members of the Demon Lords boast a great laugh. Kyrasis laughed and turned to Lunaria Sama's child. Will you show me the baby? I want to see that brilliant child between the great dragon god and my best friend Lunaria. Certainly, please. Oh, amazing, what a beautiful child, as expected of the prince of the dragon race. I can see him becoming a smart and wise man in the future. It may sound silly, but that's how Kyrasis talks. Even as the smartest and kindest of all the demons, Kyrasis wasn't good with words. Will this be a smart child? Oh, my eyes can't fool me. All my children are idiots. They had the looks of idiots, but this child is different. Is that so? Huh? Is it all right to talk down about her own children like that? Especially as the wife of demon god. Wasn't that blasphemy? No matter how intimate their relationship, it seemed sacrilege to speak ill of a child of a god. Truth is, it's not a terrible thing for a demon to be called dumb and forthright. A simpleton won't betray you, the saying goes. Of course, being smart isn't a bad thing either. For demon world, there's good smarts and bad smarts. That's why Kyrasis didn't intend anything bad. Dragon God Summer's son will become an excellent person in a different way from my own. It's a difference in values. Well, Lunaria, I'll be back. I don't know how long I'll be around, but as long as I'm here, I'm looking forward to the child's growth. Yes, please come again. Of course I will. Until then, so long. Ha 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 ha. Kyrus is left with another boisterous laugh. That's the way she is. That was the child's birth. He was blessed by all loved by all. That's why I... No, I'll leave that part till later. If I explained it out of order, you'll just get confused. Anyway, it was a blissful time in Dragon World. Relationship with Demon World was steadily improving. There was no sign of conflict between the other worlds as well. Thanks to Kyrasis Kallisis, research on monster appearances and sudden teleportations has progressed dramatically. It was a peaceful time until that day. Yes, the peaceful era suddenly came to an end one day. That day, like a nightmare, I remember clearly. On that day, I was out with Dragon God Sama to the demon world. We attended the meetings as usual. Then I discussed future plans with Necros Lacros. The agenda was about future personnel exchanges using the recently completed teleportation circles. Once the teleportation circle is completed, the cause of the teleport incidents will be known. At least, it would create an easy method for people caught by the teleport incidents to travel back to their original world. 
it would give us a fix, if not fundamentally solve the problem. The path forward was bright. When I reported this to Dragon God Summer, a person who doesn't often smile praised me warmly. Well done, Laplace. Without you, it would have taken longer. You are my son. I felt ascended to heaven right then. I was full of confidence and swagger, proudly puffing my chest and spreading my wings, boasting that I was worthy of the five dragon generals. But happiness came crashing down. I returned to Dragon World with Dragon God Summer. I went home to report to Lunaria Summer, my nostalgic home. I was expecting to be welcomed back, that I was finally made a member of the family. I was finally able to say, I'm home. But it was a scene I could never dream of. I still wish it was all but a dream. After I said, I'm home, no one answered. I heard only a voice, a baby crying, wailing. In other times, I wouldn't have thought anything of it. Babies cry, that's what they do. Even I cried as a child. However, I sensed something wrong then. This felt different from the usual crying. I hurriedly moved to Lenaria Sama's room and saw it. The bloody room. The mutilated remains. A tragic scene. At the depth of the room was what I dreaded the most. Lunaria Sama, in a pool of her own blood in the middle of the room, her body in the fetal position, still clutching to protect the wailing child.